The makers of Signal get a subpoena, Yahoo experiences more bad press, an NSA contractor is in hot water, and the EU wants to make IoT devices more secure. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, October 11, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a big thanks to our patrons at patreon.com slash threatwire. You fund the making of this show, so thank you for letting us bring you security news every single week. Our first story comes from Open Whisper Systems, the makers of the popular Signal messaging app, which allows end-to-end -end encryption for users. The company received a subpoena from the Eastern District of Virginia in early 2016 requiring information on two Signal users for an investigation. In this case, Open Whisper Systems doesn't keep much data as is, so they could only provide registration date and the last date the users were connected. Signal doesn't store contacts, groups, who users communicate with, or messages, which obviously are encrypted. According to the documents, the FBI requested, quote, any and all subscriber information and any associated accounts to include subscriber name, address, telephone number, email addresses, method of payment, IP registration, IP history logs and addresses, account history, toll records, upstream and downstream providers, any associated accounts acquired through cookie data, and any other contact information from inception to the present, which the intercept argues is much broader than what a subpoena should allow. The subpoena that they received also came with a gag order, basically making it impossible for the company to notify the public that they actually received that paperwork. So for one year, the subpoena was supposed to be in place as a gag order. Now the subpoena and responses can be read on Open Whisper Systems website due to the ACLU working with the company to retract that gag order by arguing First Amendment rights that the government must demonstrate a compelling interest in keeping a subpoena secret, which they couldn't necessarily do. The ACLU points out in an article that the government quickly agreed to publicly disclosing most of the subpoena. Given it was so easy to overturn, this also shows that the government is more interested in secrecy about subpoenas than they are transparency, and it makes us wonder how often they issue gag orders to companies that we just don't know about. Yahoo has been having a worst week ever. Seriously, Mercury is not in retrograde, so what is going on with them? I mean, first they announced that they were hacked back in 2014, and now information has come to light about a government-sponsored program being found on their servers, which was used to scan for certain character sets in emails to look for unknown data, and we don't actually know what they were looking for or why. Yahoo built this program in 2015 on top of their software designed to scan incoming email for malware or child pornography which looking for malware on email servers is pretty common, but this was kept secret from Yahoo's security team until the team discovered the software. They assumed a hacker put it there, and they opened up a high-priority internal case into the matter. The program is no longer in use, but during the time that it was installed, it could have created serious backdoors into the company's servers for anyone to peek into, with some team members calling it a poorly designed or buggy rootkit. So basically, Yahoo built a buggy program which looked like a rootkit into their server to scan incoming email, and they didn't tell their security team. And bad guys could have used it while it was there to do their own snooping. And now Verizon wants a discount of one billion bucks before they buy Yahoo, because they, they want to buy Yahoo. Because apparently you get a discount if the thing that you want to buy has security problems. Whew. A contractor at Booz Allen Hamilton, the same company that Edward Snowden worked at while he was working as a contractor with the NSA, has been accused of copying highly confidential and classified data from the NSA. The Department of Justice is filing a case against Harold Martin of Maryland after the FBI found classified documents in his home and his personal car. He faces at least one year in prison and up to 10 years for theft of the government property. Now, while we do know that Snowden's leaked documents were used for whistleblowing, we do not know what Martin's motives were. His theft was found during the ongoing Shadow Brokers investigation, which we reported on quite a while back on ThreatWire. It is not clear if the stolen documents in Martin's case have any relation to the Shadow Brokers leak of NSA spying software. However, there were some very obvious similarities between the two. Internet of Things devices have been the staple of many security and privacy news releases lately, especially with their role in the Mirai botnet, which uses unprotected IoT 
IoT devices to take down servers with a huge DDoS attack. Now, in an article by Euractive, it looks like the European Commission is looking into proposing new legislation for these devices. Lawmakers want to create rules that companies will have to meet to sell their IoT devices and to make them go through a process to get certification that guarantees privacy. I think that's pretty cool, and I feel like this is one time when the government is making a good choice. You go, EU Commission. Thank you again for being patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net as well as your own fur baby in the show. And if everyone that watches the show donates a dollar per month, we would successfully cover all of our fees like rent, electricity, my time. Plus, we will be able to put a lot more time into the shows so that we can do upgrades. We can bring you more content and things like that. Of course, if you cannot contribute, you can give this show a thumbs up that's always good. And you can subscribe to youtube.com slash hack5. I want to see if we can get this video to 1,000 likes. All you have to do is hit that little like icon at the bottom. And you can find all of our episodes. You can find links to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. Thank you so, so much for watching this episode. Thank you so much to our Patreons. We really appreciate it. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.